Okay, hopefully you understood all that. I wanted to take the time to explain all that, but now we're back on track. So we're just gonna go right into if we're um, combating Bainvik. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, those three warfare types that are on his card, we're going to either use those tokens, those other ways, or select them here. So he's versed in physical warfare, mythical warfare, chaos warfare, right? We're gonna randomize it. Okay, so phase one is going to be physical warfare, phase two is chaos, and phase three is mythical. Well, I have all the cards here so we could go over this. So for phase one, it is Sir Brennus, and we're just gonna, we're gonna attack in all of them, but we'll do it step by step. We're gonna attack. He's gonna use his worn long sword. We're gonna declare that. So phase one, he's using this. It can do one damage. Then for phase two, um, of course, this is gonna be Mahaliak because he is very proficient in chaos warfare. We're gonna move that up. He's going to attack with his primordial ax. There's the battle token phase two. Hopefully this is all clicking now that we're just going right through the motions of it. And then finally, for phase three, that is mythical. Of course, Paloom is going to attack. Push that up. And here is her doll stiletto. And we have battle token three. And that's, she is going to attack with that. So all of our heroes are kind of now ready around Bainvik and they're about to strike Bainvik. So let's get, and again, I'm not gonna use the app. I prefer rolling dice. So let's get, we have all our warfare dice, see? And then we're gonna roll. Let's see how they do. Okay, and what I usually do is just take them, like, so in the middle, that's phase two. We're gonna put that there. We'll put our phase one over here and then phase two over here. And this is kinda, guys, just like it was with the minions. You know, like how we looked at that, how we processed that. So let's take a look here at Bainvik going with physical warfare. So Sir Brennus needed to get a 12 um, to land a hit, and he has 11 and 13. Well, that's fine, that's, that's perfect, that's 14. And then he has plus three on his hero card, that's um, 17. And remember, we bought him the Academy Shield, and that is another, um, there's plus one. So he definitely landed a hit on Bainvik. So we're going to take, and I'll tell you, I'll just set this over here for now. I'll set this here. So we have one damage on Bainvik already, and he has eight health. Okay, we're gonna move into phase two. Mahaliak hit with five and five is of course 10. He uses Primordial Axe. He has a plus three on his um, hero card, because he's proficient in that. Let's take a look here and he just made it, that's a 14. So he also lands one damage, because remember, you go by the damage on the card. Hopefully all this is clicking now. It's not, you know, now that we're going through it, it's not very hard at all. So he did one damage. We're gonna put another damage on Bainvik. I have it off camera right here, but there's our damage marker. Then finally, I don't know how Paloom did, because that's only a four, so she, I think that's gonna be a miss. Even though on her hero card, we'll get that so I can show you. But hold on a second, we have to process something else. Um, right here, so that's a plus three. So that's seven. But remember, Matari had her enchanted him that added plus two to all the warfare rolls. So we could add that also to it. So that is four, and then what, three on her hero card, then two from this, so that's nine. So let's take a look at Bainvik's card. And that is a, oh, this under it, look, 10. So remember, this value here, Matari, I'm sorry, Paloom. Paloom is going to take one damage because she only hit with a nine. So I'll adjust that here. So the heroes managed to put two damage on Bainvik. I'm gonna adjust her health here. Okay, and we're about to go in the dungeon because remember, Enwin has her long shot ability, and that's what we're gonna wrap up with. So hopefully you can see how combat is played out. It's not very difficult, you know, now that we played it with the app here. But again, if you did wanna roll, you could just click that. And then 
there you go. Actually, boy, they did, well, Mahaliak didn't do too good with that, but if we would have used this, Paloom would have hit with a 15. That's very good. So let's go back to the dungeon and let's see what N1's gonna do. Okay, and finally here, we're gonna have N1 move up and try to put some damage on Bainvik with her long shot. And remember, we used this before. What was it against? I think it was a skeletal grunt. She was unsuccessful, so hopefully luck is on her side and we're gonna try to score a hit on Bainvik. So remember, she has initiative token five. So again, remember how all that played out there with you know initiative token one and Matari, then our guardian hunters, and now finally with Enwin. So we'll, we're gonna get rid of this. And she is gonna generate some movement. She has a base movement of three. Oh, that's a lot of movement, six. But we're not gonna really move up that close. We're just gonna go one, two, three. She definitely has line of sight to Bainvik here. And yes, you can shoot through um, fellow heroes and actually monsters. So if you're targeting, if there was like a minion here, you just declare, hey, I'm aiming at Bainvik. Totally fine, um, just to keep you know easy gameplay and not too fiddly. So we're going to activate long shot. And this is again, one of those fun abilities um, within four spaces, line of sight of the archer, roll one D6, consult the chart below. So we're looking for a three or six. I'm gonna activate this on our hero card back here. That is activated and we're going to roll. And of course, so we're within that, you know, one, two, three. Remember, he's over on that square right there. So that's a legal square right there where he's actually occupying. So let's see what happens. Went behind the door and, oh, perfect, four. We're gonna get another damage on him. So I have another damage for Bainvik here. We're gonna put that on him. So the heroes managed to put three damage on Bainvik um, in the hero phase. Of course, there's initiative token six, but um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing kind of the strategy, how it played out with all the heroes. And again, I'm sorry that was long, that was kind of drawn out, but I had to explain to you the different methods you could use for shuffling up the different warfare tokens. So it's like whatever you prefer. But please know, once you're playing, it goes pretty quick, you know. But I took the time, just I wanted to make sure you understood that. For the monster phase, though, which we're going to be moving into, I want to keep this here, and I'm going to show you when, you know, he's going to attack a hero. So we're going to try to keep this or bring it back um, so it's just kind of familiar to you guys. Okay, let's move on to our next um, entry in our quick reference guide. And actually, before we move on, I just want to summarize this one more time for you. So there's three methods how to shuffle up the warfare tokens. You could use the combat chart here on the dungeon UI board. You could just use an open area on your table, give them a quick shuffle, and just go one, two, three. Then of course you would just move them up and reveal them, and then just move them up for attack or defend. Or of course you could use the Dungeon Crusade combat app. Select them and randomize them. And then just pick what you wanna use. And then of course you could use the dice on top. And remember, check the description for the links to get the combat app on many different platforms. Okay, the next thing a hero can do in the hero phase is move into a chamber that has a mystery chamber token. And right here it says mandatory. Remove master token and pick and process a random double-sided mystery chamber token. And of course, remember, our red X means that ends the hero's turn. And over here in the notes, um, rallying must be announced before token reveal. End of turn for the hero and the rallied heroes. So we're going to go over this and explain this for you. And now we're going to be getting into, um, this will go right down to our next entry here about entering into one of the chambers to combat a champion monster. I've been looking forward to going over this with you. But let's um, get down in the dungeon and talk about what a mystery chamber is. It's actually very, very simple. Um, so I'll meet you down there in the dungeon. Okay, so here we are right here. We're in the Well of Eternity quadrant here. And here is a mystery chamber. And like we did before, we can see that Faith has initiative token five. 
and Zeke or Wizard has initiative token six. So we're gonna do that rallying thing here for the mystery chamber. Now, I'm gonna tell you something, guys, about mystery chambers. Um, I've always kept them a secret. Of course, players know what could reside inside of a mystery chamber. Um, my very, very good friend, DJ Sinclair, I remember him posting something about his level one heroes going into a mystery chamber, and it was pretty disastrous to say the least. But no, there is also some very good stuff inside of mystery chambers. So this is very similar to almost like the crate um, system we looked at. So let's describe what this is um, and how we go about this. Um, here we have, of course, Faith, and she is going to start her turn. She is going to generate some movement. Remember, heroes have two actions. I'm going to roll, and it's only a one. That's fine. So we're going to go one, and then remember, no action or nothing to open a door. Two, she's in a mystery chamber token. Now, you have an option. You could rally another hero into this chamber, which we're going to discuss next when we're talking about champions, which you definitely want to rally a hero into the, one of these chambers, or she could try to reveal that mystery token on her own. It is highly recommended to rally a, he a fellow hero into that chamber, into a mystery chamber token. So we're gonna do just like we did before. It's the same system. She is going to rally Zeke to join her. So she's gonna come over here. I'm gonna pay the one essence back here. Remember, to rally one hero or two heroes, it's always just one essence. So we're gonna pay that. So now Zeke has been, of course he has initiative token six. He's going to be rallied. He's gonna generate movement. He has a five and he has a base movement of two. One, two, three, four, and five in there with faith. Now they can reveal the mystery token or the mystery chamber token. But remember, this is a master token. Remember it's both Side. So let's go over here and show you how to process a mystery chamber. So when um, the heroes are within a chamber, a mystery chamber, just like we did with those crate tokens, you're going to take all of the mystery chamber tokens and put them in your orb or bag or mug, give them a shuffle and pull one out. It's, it's that simple with these. Um, I'm not going to reveal any of these. There's some quite interesting things the heroes can find and some other things here as can find. And before we move on, that definitely for the expansion, I've created new mystery chambers that are pretty unique and kind of out there. So I think that you'll enjoy, you know, what's coming in the expansion, but there's some awesome stuff already in mystery chambers and maybe not so much awesome stuff. And that's quite simply how you process a mystery chamber. Okay, the next thing we're gonna go over in the hero phase in our quick reference guide is down here at the last entry. And this is when um, a hero, when you move into a chamber that has a monster token, a champion monster token. Okay, and then again, mandatory, flip token over, draw appropriate champion monster card and begin combat. And remember, the red X means that ends your turn with combat, and then there's some notes here similar to what we just read. Rallying must be announced before token reveal. End of turn for hero and rallied heroes. I'm sorry, that was out. So um, we're gonna go over that now. We're gonna learn a lot um, about the champion monsters in the game. I'm gonna show you some, the different variety of them, and we're gonna discuss the incantation, incantation track, excuse me. Um, so we're gonna learn a lot about this and I've been looking forward to this. But before we get to this, I hope that you're seeing now, you know, and there's still a few more other things we have to go on to go over of how much you can do in Dungeon Crusade. You know, I do like my linear dungeon crawl games, but hopefully you're seeing it's truly an open world dungeon crawl game. There's just a multitude of things to do, different strategies and tactics and planning. So I just hope you're enjoying all this. Okay, we're gonna get Zeke and Mahaliak, and remember, they were heading down to the Tomb of St. Viticus, north and south, to do a side quest, so we're gonna catch up with them, and I'll see you down in the Tomb of St. Viticus. Okay, here we are with our heroes, Mahaliak and Zeke, our wizard, and they're about to go into this chamber in the Tomb of St. Viticus, south. So, 
Um, and again, we're doing that again where you can see initiative token two, initiative token three. And so let's start off, with, first of all, let's generate some movement from Haliak. And you probably already know, he has a base movement of two plus the roll of a D6. And so three, one, two, remember no action to open a door, three. This is very important here. And I'm gonna just move the door over here. Um, and this is a big rule in the game. Notice that this is a champion monster token. Monster token, I refer to them as champion monster tokens. Cause remember up there where we have the champion monster cards, that's what they're kind of connected to. When a hero moves into a chamber, you are never permitted to remove to reveal this monster token. Now we're on the one quest, um, Chambers of the Corrupt, and it's kind of like a tutorial quest. So we know that there's gonna be a level one monster. However, with what we learned before is like when I wrote these quests, there's always a chance there could be one monster like a level higher or an empty chamber. So that's kind of like, you know, it's a dungeon crawl game. We want that randomness, that that surprise for us. So if this hero is gonna rally another hero, this can never be revealed. Big, big, big rule. So Mahelix in here and he's maybe like, just to picture it thematically, he's like lurking in the chamber he just got in. He's gonna call out to his comrade Zeke to come into the chamber and you know rally him to fight what champion monster resides in there. So he's gonna rally. What do we do? We get his hero card and we're gonna pay one essence for the rally call. And I'm gonna say it again so you know. Remember that when you pay that one essence for rallying, you can rally one or two additional heroes, maximum of you know three heroes with the one who's rallying. So we've done that. So he's kind of just waiting at the door right now for Zeke to get in there. We're gonna generate movement for Zeke. A lot of movement, six and two, base movement of two, that's eight. One, two, three, four. Okay, so they're in the chamber. So at this time, now that they're ready for combat, the monster token can be revealed, the champion monster token. And we know it's a level one, so we're just gonna reveal it, and sure enough, it is a level one. Okay, before we get into this, I wanna, I wanna chat with you about the champion monsters and let you know a few things that I think you'll enjoy learning about. So let's grab some champion monster cards. Okay, before we begin the combat and explain that, I did want to touch on the champion monsters in the game. Like I said before, champion monsters are usually going to be safeguarding um, some of the quest items in the game. For this particular quest, it's just a kill and clear. Um, so we're just going to be killing off level one monsters. But just remember again, here's your level one champions, level one champion monster tokens. Level two champion monsters, level two champion monster token, level three mo champion monsters, level three champion monster token, and finally level four, level four champion monster tokens. So I don't think this is a spoiler, but just just know that when you when your heroes encounter level one, level two, level three, and level four. My thought was to always have these change. So the monsters you see in level one, you're not gonna see for level two. There's brand new monsters that are of course tougher and more health and more you know more powerful special abilities. So exactly when you go to level three, you're never gonna see you know the same kind of monsters or creatures. There's brand new monsters and creatures in level three and just like level four. So you're always gonna see new types of monsters. So for example, and hopefully this isn't a spoiler, but I thought you'd like to see some. You know, there, there's all kinds of monsters in level one. Afflicted, um, Tenderfoot Warlock. And we're gonna get into um, elites. Remember our gold star and silver? See, like there's a silver. That's a normal champion monster. That's where I wrote the origin stories for that. And then the gold star is of course elite. So you can expect to find normal versions or elite versions that have nasty special abilities. Um, and there's an afflicted that's an elite, massive viper, sister of the faith. She's part of an evil faction I created called the faith, the faith. Monstrous spider, massive viper, vampiric assassin, and black hand sniper. Um, there's a faction called the black hand army led by Lord black hand, the guardian of the game. So that's another evil faction in the game. So you can, 
see there's there's a good amount of variety and then when you go to level two I don't think we're going to go through all these. I'll have to keep some a surprise. But, you know, when you go up to level two, there's skeleton warriors. And then um, another black hand um, member of the black hand, black hand thuriafer, um, primeval regent, another black hand um, thuriafer, keeper of, oh, keeper of the faith, part of the faith, the, the religious evil cult, black hand um, blade master. Uh, I know there's a skeletal archer. Or there's an orc berserker in here, skeletal archer. Um, and back to over here to the keeper of the faith. So just, I'll save these for a surprise for you, but just know different monsters in level three and definitely different monsters in level four. So there, you're, you're always going to see something new as when you go into chambers with your heroes. Okay, so I just, I grabbed one of the level one champion monsters here, and I thought we could just go over um, some of this. It, a lot of this is going to be very familiar to you. Um, of course, there's the art. Um, this, of course, the name of it, Massive Viper. And remember, there's that, you know, white glow to its name and the one skull that's normal difficulty. You know, Expert would be a green glow to its name, two skulls. And if the massive viper's name glowed in blue, that's heroic, and that'd be three skulls there. Um, we discussed this. This is an elite. It has a nasty special ability. If it was a silver star, that's a normal version, and that's just the origin stories that I wrote um, for that monster. Again, this is familiar to you right here. Here's your warfare values, same exact system there. Uh, this is a little different here. Um, instead of that target priority on minions and guardians, this just has the level one in this kind of crystal I put there. This right here is called Evade. And we're gonna get to that in a moment. I don't think we're gonna discuss that right now, but just know that this is the Evade value. And we'll discuss that in a moment. And just like we learned before, there's your loot and gold roll. But notice now the values are a little bit better because you're fighting, um, you know, you're fighting a champion monster. So you have a little better chance to get some loot and you have a very good chance of getting gold. And this is what I mean that when you get into the champion monsters and the guardians, you're going to notice that, you know, some are more, um, you're, they're going to be carrying more gold or a, a better chance of carrying gold than other ones. And some of them will have a better chance of having dropping loot and some might not at all. Okay. So that's, that's kind of familiar right there to you right here. That's that racial trait that is a uh, mythical. Um, this is a mythical monster. And then right here, of course, is the champion monster's health. And this is life force. Remember on our minions, they don't have anything. So when you start getting into these champion monsters, they're definitely worth life force. XP, pretty much. So you're going to, when upon slaying one, you're going to take two life force, as it says here, and just put it in your pool over there. Because remember, all heroes can... Um, use that for leveling up or getting a new new special ability or powering underworld artifacts. And yes, we're going to get into underworld artifacts also. But going back to this evade, let me explain to you how the combat system works with champion monsters. It's basically the same as we just saw with the Guardian. We're going to be using our app for this combat with Mahaliak and Zeke. But just know when you enter into a chamber with um, a champion monster, it's continuous. You keep going. It, it, you don't stop. You just keep fighting until one of three things happens. Until the heroes kill this champion monsters. Or the second option or thing that could happen is if the champion monster kills a hero or heroes. Or three, this is where evade comes in. When the heroes, if a hero or heroes evade out of a chamber, and that simply means that maybe this is too tough. Like if this was a level two monster and say you sent in a, a solo hero and this turned out to be a level two monster and they're level one, you may want to consider evading out of the chamber. And quite simply, it's this. After the monster processes their special ability, you can attempt to evade. You look at their hero card. We'll take a look at Sir Brennus right here, since he is this right here. And here's that same symbol right here. That's evade. So right there, it tells you that that's a two. Oh, that comes into focus there. Yeah, that's a, that's a two. So you're going to roll the D20, and you're going to add whatever the result is. You're going to add that two 
to that D20. So let's say 11 was rolled, add two. Okay, he has a 13 evade. Looking back here at the um, Massive Viper, he has only, I believe that's a 12, it comes into focus here. Um, that's a 12. So he would successfully evade out of that chamber. So as long as it would be 12 or higher, that hero would evade out of that chamber and you don't have to fight this champion monster. What you do is, and we're just gonna shift this over here real quick. So let's just say they, that these two were combating this monster. Zeke decides he's gonna evade out. He's successful. So what you're gonna do is just place him outside of the door on the, on the first square. Let's say that Mahaliak evaded out. Very simple, he's gonna move out and you move him to an adjacent square to Zeke, okay? That's how that works. However, there's some bad results. When you leave a champion monster inside of a chamber, they start an incantation that could lead to a hex over the village. We're not gonna to get too far ahead. We're gonna do some combat and then we're gonna talk about that. But just know that, that if you ever leave a champion monster alone in a chamber and you can't defeat it and you evade out, depending on what that level monster is, if this is a level one, you're gonna put a, a, one of the red tracker tokens on the incantation track on the first space. And quite simply, let's say that you evaded out from a level two monster, you're gonna put two red tokens on the incantation track, so on and so forth. Level three monster, if you evaded out, you're gonna put three tokens. Finally, level four monster, you're gonna put four tokens. So we're gonna get into that, but let's get into some combat and see how this goes. And actually, before we move on, I do, I do want to touch on these for you. Remember we removed these from the Champion Monster decks, these dual monster chamber cards. Um, it does add a significant challenge to the game, which I love. But when you're getting acclimated to this game, do remove these. Um, right here, here's, you know, there's two in level one, two of these in level two, two in level three, and two in level four. So, you know, maybe you could just play with one of them or both of them, um, but it does really amp up the difficulty of the game. But I just wanted to touch base with you on these um, and explain exactly what these are. And it's, it's very simple. Um, two mon it says right here, if you draw one of these cards from a champion monster deck, two monsters dwell within this chamber. Draw two level three champion monster cards and place them face down in a stack. Turn over the top card and fight this monster. When slain, fight the final monster. Reshuffle this card back into the deck after this event. So thinking of it thematically, you know, these heroes go in and there's not one, but there's two champion monsters that they have to fight. But of course, you don't do it at the same time. Like it said, stack them up, maybe give a quick shuffle so you don't know which one, pull one, and the heroes have to combat both of those champion monsters. So I just wanted to touch base with you on that before we got into some combat. Okay, let's have some fun and get into some combat. And since we pulled this massive Viper, we're just going to use this for what they're going to be combating, okay? So again, we see those warfare values there, and we're going to be using our Dungeon Crusade combat app for this. So this um, massive Viper is versed in physical warfare, ranged warfare, and mythical warfare. Now, this is very good that we sent these two in because glancing at their hero cards, of course, Mahaliak is very proficient in physical. And also, he has that, um, was it the Evergreen Bow? So, um, he is definitely going to be attacking in two of the phases um, the, for this massive Viper. And then, of course, Zeke, we're going to have him attack in Mythical because he has a plus one to mythical warfare right there so that'll be good so i think these heroes are pretty set up for combating this massive viper so let's get our combat app let's shuffle up the tokens and let's get the battle underway okay i set up our little demo right here and hopefully everything stays in place um, i'm really looking forward to this i think you're gonna enjoy learning about champion combat here it's, it's almost the same thing as guardians over here, you can see I put some hit markers. The Massive Viper does have three um, hit points. This is an elite because it's a gold star. And I have, have our heroes over here, like they're combating this thing. So, but remember, 
this massive viper has is an elite, so it has a special ability. So I'm gonna move the warfare dice out of here and we're gonna get our D20 and let's read what this special ability is. And I wanna point uh, something out about the wording of something on these cards. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn a lot right now in this section. So looking down here at the special ability, Thrashing Strike, before combat, I wanna stop right there and let you guys know something. There's two different wordings. Before combat, this means it's only gonna happen right now. Before this one combat, you'll never have to do this again. You're gonna see that some champion monsters with some of the special abilities I created will say something like before each round of combat, meaning you have to do that before each round of combat. And rounds of combat go fairly quick with this. And remember, it's continuous until one of those three conditions happens. So I just wanted to point that out. Remember, before combat, you only do this this one time. So let's read about this thrashing strike and what our heroes have to do. Thrashing strike, before combat, each hero must test strength 11 to block the viper. On a fail, the hero takes one damage and loses one essence. Also, test physical resistance 12. On a fail, that hero is stricken with a physical affliction. So remember that, that we learned that before about the affliction. So I'm glad all this is like coming together and hopefully you're seeing how all this works with afflictions and special abilities. So um, according to this, we're gonna have to have each hero, Mahaliak and Zeke, test um, strength 11. So this, this, this massive viper is like thrashing around and it's gonna try to do a quick strike on them. So we're going to go with Mahaliak first, and he has got very good strength. If we look up there at the strength, see like the arm there? So three. And what do we have to get? We have to get 11. I think he's going to be able to do this. So let's see, rolling the D20. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, he just blocked it with that. So the three strength added to the eight, that's 11. Of course, all we had to get was 11. Remember, it's 11 or higher meet or exceed he passed the test so he doesn't have to do the physical affliction he blocked it now taking a look at zeke's hero card he had it zero so this is going to be a natural roll of the d20 so he needs to get uh 11 or higher to block this and oh look at that a 10. okay so he didn't now we have to test physical resistance and basically all that is, is you get to add all of your physical, like down here, let me get the hero card. When you test your resistance, you're going to add or subtract, in his case, that's not good, physical resistance. So it's already at a negative three. We're gonna have to deduct that. He does not have any kind of equipment that'll buff that up. So this is going to, he's more than likely going to take a physical affliction. But let's see what we have to get. Okay, so also test physical resistance 12. On a fail, that hero is stricken with a physical affliction. So that's 12, and then we're gonna have to deduct three from this roll. He needs, Zeke needs to roll incredibly high to not take this physical affliction. So we're gonna roll. Holy mackerel, look at that, an 18. So of course, deducting that three. So I'm gonna make sure I show you guys this so you get that. So see the three? on physical um, warfare there, right there. Okay, so we're gonna deduct that, that's 15. He did excellent. So he is not going to take a physical affliction from the massive viper. That worked out perfectly. And I'm glad that came up because now you can see how to process those special abilities. Okay, so let's get on to the warfare role. 